the court. The judiciary comprises two types of courts, the corporate administrative court and a living common law court of record. A judge in an administrative court does not act judically, judicially, but as an administrator to settle the account in contractual disputes. A judge in a court of record sits judicially with a jury of the people tasked with repairing harm to living people. The courts are attended by commercial listed judges, some of whom are designated as jury judges for common law courts. Common law upholds the lawful rights of living men and women. Statutes apply legislation to artificial legal persons. Statutes apply legislation to artificial legal persons. A statutory administrative court is for commerce in practice de facto. It is a place of corporate banking for settling contract disputes between legal persons extracting commercial value penalties from living men and women who may unwittingly not know they have consented to the act to act as legal persons obligated by adhesion contracts administrative courts are not sanctioned by parliament and are not part of the du jour laws and usages of the realm. All administrative courts are unlawful because they do not have a jury present. Any court without a jury present is an administrative court. The law is absolutely clear on this subject. There is no authority for administrative courts in this country, and no act can be passed to legitimize them. Again, this is England, Hallsbury Law, but the standards are the same. A common law court is for justice with a jury, in law de jure. It is a place of evidence, analysts, where a jury of one's peers determines what is factual, right or wrong, just and fair. The parties are living men and women and their decisions attempt to repair harm or loss to one or more injured parties the, and to provide protections for living people. The only venue of justice for the living man and woman is a constitutionally sanctioned common law court of record with a jury. The law versus statutes. The law is the common law, and it is the foundation of justice for living people. Laws serve all people equally. Laws serve all people equally. Laws defend our unalienable rights, a lien, alienable rights and freedom provide restoration to the injured and through them we can live in peace and harmony with other people the law is the definition of the people's power and common sense now you must comprehend this peace and harmony comes through law it does not come through love the law protects living people from harm loss and fraud statutes are the enactments of legislature that apply to publicly registered 
legal entities as franchises of the incorporated state. Statutes offer benefits and privileges to artificial legal persons, actors, prescribing contracts, rules, and regulations by consent, i.e. your driver's license, your passport. Statutes can have the appearance of color of law. Statutes govern legal entities as a franchise benefit to the incorporated state. Statutes are not laws. The law is from the people. Statutes are from the state. In New Zealand, a constitutional monarchy with a parliamentary system of government. All private sovereign men and women are de jure in law. All public servants and other artificial legal entities are de facto in practice. The government is divided into three branches. The legislative branch enacts statutes of legislation prescribes rules, regulations for legal entities. Statutes can have color of law. The executive branch, the cabinet and departments, they manage the government to serve the people. The executive take oath to uphold the law. The judiciary branch, administrators, De facto statutes facilitates de jure common law trial by jury when the people create new case law. Judiciary administrators versus facilitates common law. One is de facto, one is de jure. The people's common law power of justice is judicial and exercise lawfully trial by jury whereas the state's delegated duty of management is executive and exercised legally which is legislation statute types are acts bills now think about the books book of acts that's a statute they're talking about the real life actors whose actions revolved around statutes. Acts chapter 5. And the council, that's who was in charge. Statute types are acts, bills, and legislative instruments and they apply to artificial legal legislated persons. So their text never referred to living men or living women. Statute titles never end with the word law. Public officials habitually refer to acts as laws, which is a lie. But act is not law. See? I.e., the Land Transportation Act is not titled the Land Trans Transportation Law. Only a few statutes acknowledge the right of the living man or woman to do process of law, including, again, this is not in America, but the imperial laws. Application Act of 1988, which statute, which, excuse me, which states that the common law shall be part of the laws of New Zealand. The observance of due process of law statutes of 1368, which acknowledges due process according to the old law of the land. And New Zealand and the New Zealand Bill of Rights of 1990, which is for the benefit of all natural persons. Now, although a person 
can be an entity, it is not natural. So the statement of natural person shows a building cannot be included. It states, there is a natural compulsion to obey the law because it safeguards our living rights and freedoms. We do not honor the law. If we do not honor the law, it cannot afford us protection. However, obeying statutes is voluntary. We are members of the legal society as a matter of choice. Our consent is given excuse me, unilaterally, not collectively via a government election. In a truly free nation, we would give our consent freely to obtain the benefits and privileges offered by the state and common law jurisdiction. We must be aware that the state has been incorporated to serve the debt money system of bondage. So we the people are not offered de jure common law contracts serving the state, but de facto admiralty maritime contracts serving banks as the surety for debt. Remember, I've always said it's a pyramid scheme. This is how it's done. You are the individual pillar. By conducting business, it's not about your actions. It's about what you do when you're filling out paperwork, what you do when someone talks to you. It's just that simple. If corrupt statutes become new, excuse me, onerous to the common good, the people have the right to withdraw their consent in order to defend their rights, put on a mask. And indeed, they have an obligation and duty to do so because only the people can redress corruption of the government. So when they put forth the system saying you can't use cash, only people can change this. Statutes are contracts. Statutes prescribe the terms and conditions of commercial contracts. I've told you, your product, your spoiled milk, they want to get rid of you. Have you listened? Everything I've ever told you has been throughout these documents. I said it in a weird way, they're saying it in a legal way. A relying on their effect upon your consent. Before you go into court, you have to what? You have to give up your rights. And sign that you gave up your rights. Kia Ora, the authoritative source of acts, bills, and legislative instruments. Instrument, comma, contracts. Everything that you have to use in paper form is a contract. Keep this in mind. The writing which contains some agreement. That's what a hall pass is. That's what a passport is. That's what your mortgage is. That's what most of your papers of ownership is. It is a instrument. A piece of paper with details showing your ownership showing authority and is so called because it has been prepared as a memorial a memory of the moment a memorial of what has taken place or has been agreed upon the agreement and the instrument in which it is contained are very different things. The latter, which is the agreement, the latter being the only evidence of the exist, excuse me, the latter is the, uh, in the, in the instrument, the receipt, 
is the only evidence of the existence of the former, which is the agreement. Now, you go to stores, you pick up packages, your agreement by grabbing the package and standing in line. Your agreement is by paying the number on the outside is the way that you can walk out of the store with that item. The instrument is your receipt. You show your receipt when someone's trying to stop you. Hey, you just bought that big box. You show your instrument, your receipt. It is the evidence of the existence that you grabbed the package, purchased it, and it, you now own it. The instrument or form of the contract may be valid, but the contract itself may be void on the account of fraud. This is why you return something. You use the receipt and you sign your name. Boyer's Law Dictionary, 1856. All these things are completely in effect today. Statutes and Acts versus the Law Statutes, the legislator makes statutes by the enactments of legislations. The law, the people make the law by the acceptance or validation of jury decisions. Statutes and Acts Statutes are the state's legal contracts prescribed in advance as the legal fiction acts bills legislative instruments versus the law is the people's common law recorded in time make law making as case law statutes and acts are con contract offer contracts offered or contract offers made effective by the informed consent of man and woman that shouldn't say that i should say uh legal entity versus the law laws or moral customs made effective by the conscience of the people, man and woman. See, man, as, as they stated before, man and woman shouldn't really even be written on the side of statutes. Acts, statutes and acts, acts, civil law contracts, a writing which states in legal form that a thing has been said. It has been done or agreed upon on Bouvier's Law Dictionary of 1856 under Act. Now, in the law, law, when considered in relation to its origin, is a statute law or common law. This is Bouvier's Law Dictionary, 1856. Now, this is why they say statute is law, because it falls under the dictionary. Even though in the teaching, you know that statutes right there, when written as legislator, an act of legislator, select legislator. This word is used in contradistinction dis, contradistinction to the common law. So you see why these two counter contradistinction is opposites. Right, draw a line down the middle. So Bouvier's Law Dictionary has considered its relation to its origin in statute law or common law. When you understand that during in the law side you deal with common law, and on the statute side you deal with what? Statutes. So under law, that shouldn't that's kind of a misuse of the word of statute. Statute, as we read, it is a general rule that when the provision of a statute is general, everything which is necessary to make the provision effective, effectual is supplied by the common law. 
Now you see you have the reverse of that. So I would take this to mean that when the man and woman does not accept the state of man and woman and they accept the state of legal entity, a statute can be if in effect in common law consequences can be placed upon the man and the woman because they did not fall under law, they fell under statute. <coughs> law as a compound object of common law is understood to be contrasted contrasted with or opposed to statutory which is exactly what is being what i just said which again considered in relation to its origin it is statute or common law understood as contrast or opposed to statutory so hopefully everybody can see that conundrum which lies in there. It seems if someone wanted statute to be acted as law, they would have to go back to the original source and alter it. Hence, when doing this, we're using 1856. We've already seen that New Zealand as well as other places have laws that go back to 1300. There is a huge gap between 1300 and 1800 to get a definition of, of, of law having statute or common law, even if it's a one, two, three, four, or five under the word law, because again, they are opposed to each other. Statute and common law and law and again it's because it's law that's why it's listed there they are opposed as in to say good evil hot cold black white but again because statute law which is an oxymoron because statutes are not laws is the problem so again they're opposed to each other law common the common law is that which derives its force from the authority of the universal consent not universe but universal meaning international and immemorial practice of the people a memorial a memorial is an instrument it records the moment like a newspaper clipping legal under statutes uh, things are legal the undoing of god's law i want you to understand and comprehend this is critical legal and lawful are two different sides here's the legal side here's the lawful side lawful Full of law. Legal. The undoing of God's law. So God says ale. Is raw ale. So it's leg ale. We're pronouncing it wrong. It's leg ale. Is raw ale. Encyclopedia Britannica, a dictionary of arts and sciences and general literature. Now, isn't that funny? We're going to get everything else from Bouvier's, but this we need to get from Britannica. How exciting to find this here. Someone asked me, can you use... Britannica, is it British? I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think it's a play on words. Maybe I was wrong. Because look at what they're telling you. The word legal means. Law of nature on the legal, excuse me, law side. Law of nature. The law of nature is that which God, higher, higher, the sovereign 
of the universe has prescribed to all men by the international, excuse me, internal dictate of reason alone. Bouvier's Law Dictionary, 1856. On the statute st side, statutes govern legal entities as a franchise benefit to the state. The law, on the law side, the law protects the people, the man and woman, the natural person from harm, from loss, and from deceit. Now, that itself is an oxymoron since we live in a system where this is being used against what? The people. On the statute side, we are not all equal in the text of statute. We should keep this in mind. On the law side, we are all equal in the eyes of the law. The eyes of the law are colorblind. It is the people that have taken these specific offices who are, what? Violating your lawful rights. They have formed ways to what? Go around your unalienable rights, and they've put liens against you. Which is what? Deceit. So when you bring the law against the statute writers, we all are equal. On the statute side, statues are based on practicalities. On the law side, laws are, are based on principles. On statutes, statutes can quickly come and go. On the law side, laws evolve over time and often endure. On the statute side, Legal or leg ale, leg all, refers to legislation. On the law side, lawful refers to the law. On the statute side, the legislator cannot overturn case law. On the legal side, a jury of people can or overturn a statute. Understand what that says. The legislator cannot overturn case law made by the people, but the people can overturn a statute made by any politician. The people can overturn any statute made by politicians. Politician says, you must wear masks, you must wear skirts, you must wear dresses. The people can overturn any statute that the politician makes. Statutes can serve the law, but cannot diminish or expand the law. And on the law side, laws can be taken into statutes, but if repealed in the statute, they remain in law. So it just depends on the situation. Think about the stand your ground law, or you will hear it called the stand your ground rule. This is a moment when the statutes serve the law but if repealed, it stays in the law. <laughs> right? Okay, I think I'm just gonna get it. Right. So the statutes are non positive law, they're negative. 
Statutes do not serve law. So buckle up. It's the law. Is that a law or a statute? Positive on the law side. Positive law, statute serving the law. Negative side, the statutes not serving the law. The law says you have freedoms. You have the right to travel. On the statute side, it says you cannot drive, operate a moving vehicle without these things. On the statute side, you have color of law, misuse of authority without right. We clearly have a color of law situation. We clear. So why didn't they just say? We clearly have the misuse of authority without the right to do so. And they hold themselves not guilty. Moral law on the law side is the principle of right living. So you've heard these arguments. You've heard people say, oh, they're animals. Slavery, this, that. They were playing what? The color of law. So technically, if you say that slavery affects your morals and you feel slavery is morally wrong, then you think that every living person has the right to blah, blah, blah. That is the law in your heart. When you sit there and say, they're of another nation, they call themselves black, they, they clearly say color of law. I harassed him because he was black. I asked him for his ID. There was no property damage. There was no one injured. I just walked up to him as a policy officer and I asked him for his ID. That's a misuse of authority. Under statutes, de facto means in practice. The book of Jashir, the wicked practices, right? Under law, de jure means in law. You want to stay, de jure. Great Poupon, de jure, right? So, on the statute side, you have Admiralty Maritime Commercial Law of the Sea, which is foreign international jurisdiction. On the law side, you have the People's Common Law, Law of the Land, Sovereign National Jurisdiction. Now, this is why you say, Citizens cannot be sovereigns. That's why you hear people, are you a sovereign citizen? They do not even understand the difference, nor do the people saying they are sovereign citizens. Cannot be on the citizen side and have sovereignty. You must reach private sovereign status or private national status. Status deals with jurisdiction. If you have no status, you haven't filed, you are, as I have told you, government employees. As I have shown you with the paperwork and government trash, the state can state trash because you are not connected to the state. State is national. America was overthrown. You were taught to call it a bankruptcy. If you do not know that there is paperwork to fill out to be a national then you're not an american 
If you did not fill out the paperwork and get accepted, you're not an American. American comes with statehood. As a U.S. citizen, you belong to the state. You're married to the state. The state can abuse you. As a private you're on the land which is below the level of what you would say the state the state is an overlay it's all it is it's a 3D map where you can only see the top. And you look down. And there's a grid that says these are the boundaries of the state. And as soon as you zoom in, you don't see those boundaries anymore. You just see trees and ground and grass. You're what? On the land. The state is just aerial view. When you look at a map, they show you land and water. They show you land and water. But a map does not show you what the ground looks like. It can only show you the boundaries, the dividing lines. The state is not tangible. When the state calls you to court, you have the right to address your accuser. I call the state to bear witness. Only an agent of the state, the state itself, cannot sit or stand or talk or breathe or shit or burp. On the statute side, profit and dispute. On the law side, people and peace. Peace means what? No violent action. On the statute side, statutes are artificial, dealing with artificial entities. Any business is an artificial entity. They turned you into a business, an employee of your own personal business. On the law side, the law is the living. The living God. There's only one. Gave us law. Just think. Don't argue. Administrative courts. The judiciary comprises of two types of courts, the corporate administrative court and a common law court of record. A judge in an administrative court does not act judicially, but as an administrator to settle contractual disputes. A judge in a court of record sits judicially as a jury of the people, the courts are attended by commercially listed judges, some of whom are designated as jury judges for common law courts. The common law acknowledges the lawful rights possessed by the living men and living women. Statutes apply legislation to artificial legal persons a statutory court excuse me a statutory statutory administrative court is for commerce in practice de facto it is a place of corporate banking for settling contractual disputes between legal persons extending commercial value penalties from living men and women who may unwittingly consent to act 
as legal entities obligated by adhesion contract. The administrative courts are not sanctioned by parliament and are not part of the de jure laws and usage of the realms. All administrative courts are unlawful because they do not have a jury present. Any court without a jury present is an administrative court. The law of absolute the law is absolutely clear on this subject. There is no authority for administrative courts in this country, and no act can be passed to legitimize them. Halsbury Law. 2011. A common law court is for a justice with a jury in law de jure. It is a place of evidence analysis where a jury of one's peers determines what is factual, right and wrong, just and fair. The parties are living men and women and their decisions attempt to repair or, excuse me, repair harm or repair loss to one or more injured parties as to provide protections for living people. The only venue for justice for the living man and woman is a constitutionally sanctioned common law court of record with a jury. A common law court du jour with a jury is the only venue of justice for a living man and woman. Administrative courts operate on the on assumptions and presumptions. The Crown makes the presumption that you are acting in joinder to the name. So when you rebut the presumption, they have no jurisdiction and cannot proceed. Any further action is fraudulent. To rebut the presumption, it is only necessary to correct the mistake in the name. Presumption. A rule of law which permits a court to assume a fact is true until such time as there is preponderance, a greater weight of evidence, a greater weight of evidence, so they can assume things to fact. until greater evidence which disproves or outweighs, rebutes. So when something outweighs what's been laid on the table, just like in cards, you set down a two, somebody puts a three, that's been rebuted because it's greater weight. The, it rebutes the presumption. Each presumption is based upon a particular set of apparent facts paired with established laws, logic, and reasoning or individual rights. Now, this is what happens with presumption. So, when someone presumes they are a policy officer. They presume you're the person they have on their warrant. Because to them, it's logical. Based on established laws. Now, remember, laws can mean statutory laws or common law. They're not talking about common law. They're talking about established statutory law. Plus logic equals what? color of law. You're carrying a Walkman. They say that's reasoning. He's carrying a criminal tool. They have the right to presume things into fact until you disprove or rebuke he was driving with a large sum of money. He must be a drug dealer because of established statutes and logic. He's wearing gold chains. 
a presumption is rebutable in that it can be refuted by factual or actual evidence. One can also prevent facts to persuade the judge that the presumption is not true. Jurisdiction is over the name. Liability is attached to the name. So the correct, so correct the mistake in the matter of the name. <clears throat> Administrative courts, they deal with no jury. Law courts, common law courts, jury of peers. Administrative courts, law of the sea versus common law court, law of the land. Administrative court, admiralty maritime commercial jurisdiction versus the common law court is common law people's jurisdiction. Admiralty, oh, excuse me, administrative court deals with incorporated court. Common law court deals with court for non-incorporated court. Admiralty, administrative, excuse me, I keep saying admiralty with that. Administrative court for dead entities. Understand, your straw man, in Latin, your en ligus. Common law court is for the living person. Administrative court is for the artificial legal persons. This is all personage. All personage. If you just co commonly understood that as an individual, this is all treason under the law. But it's for the individual to understand. Administrative court is the corporate dispute resolution service for consenting, you've agreed upon it, parties. Common law court is the constitutional venue to pursue justice for the living man and for the living woman. The administrative court calculates. The common law court is a court of record which weighs evidence. The administrative court is to settle the account in a commercial transaction. And the common law court is to repair the harm and repair the loss suffered by an injured party, which we call a remedy. The administrative court is the administration of contracts by consent, legal privileges and benefits prescribed in statutes, acts, rules, codes, etc. Versus the common law court is upholding unalienable rights, lawful rights, properties endowed to living people and acceded to the state. The administrative court deals with commerce. The common law court deals with justice. The administrative court, the judge takes bar association oath to serve the bar. You understand that? Not to serve the nation, to serve the bar. Not to serve uh, USA, USA, but to serve the bar. On common law, court judge takes the oath of office to serve the people. The judge, excuse me, judge, did you bring your oath of office today? And, uh, administrative court, judge serves administratively. Common law court, judge serves judicially. Administrative court, officers of the court have private surety bonds. Surety, you. Common law court. Officers of the court have public statutory bond. So do you understand this? On the administrative side, on the statute side, you are the public surety and they are the private. On the common law side or the private side 
they are the public and you of course are the private and this should show you the complete 180 of the us versus them when you hear officers talk about the us versus them but here you actually have it in the law so again if you have 90 percent of the nation's police officers of an ethnos and they believe in supremacy then you will not receive justice if you do not know how to find justice you will always be treated as a debt servant an employee a character a cartoon and what do you see when you watch cartoons you see them bashing each other On the administrative side, officers of the court have full commercial liability. If they damage commercial property, they have full commercial liability in private capacity. On the common law side, officers of the court have limited liability. They don't have full coverage in public capacity. On the administrative court side, you're dealing with a country club. They are special, you are not. Once you have gone into the private, you're putting your documents on record, you are sovereign to them. You are part of the nation, sovereign nation or sovereign national. On the administrative side, they deal with the de facto in practice court system. On the law side, on the common law side, you deal with the de jure in law court. Declining to appear. An administrative court is a dispute resolution service for consulting parties. A summons is a invitation summoning waken the dead remember on this side you're dead for dead entities so they summon the dead or calling you to accept their dispute resolution service in admiralty maritime jurisdiction so of course you have the right to decline their offer of contract. Since jurisdiction is attached to the artificial legal person name and not the living man or woman, it is essential to correct the mistake in the matter of the name as soon as possible after a summons is received. It is not necessary to, necessary to go to their court. Indeed, by simply making an appearance in their court, you will imply your belief in the person, which is guilty by default since it is a debtor and surety for the national corporate debt. If you appear in court in their theater, they will presume, presumption, that you are acting in joinder to the artificial in legas legal person straw man under the court's jurisdiction puppet because you are there alternatively the below notice of conditional acceptance re notice to appear can be sent to the registrar of the court to decline their offer this usually cancels out their hearing as there is no joinder and no proof of claim it's just an allegation or hearsay notice take out one letter and it's heresy right 
right? Remember, this already showed you this connection to God, right? The living under statutes. Uh, leg ale, leg ale, the undoing of God's laws. So it's just an allegation. It's just an allegation or hearsay or heresy. The registrar, registrar of the court accepts and stamps court documents. You can require a copy by return post for your records. You can even go to the registrar's office, and if they refuse to make a copy, you can take the documents and copy them, and then return the originals. All courts have the copy machine in the building. If the registrar refuses to make the copy, Find out where the copy office is, and you can take your stamped document, and they will copy it, and the stamp will be on the new page. For example, Notice of Conditional Acceptance, RE Note to Appear, I, a man, refer to the attached notice dated whatever they sent you, and advise that your offer, the court's offer, to assume jurisdiction and your instrument have been accepted for value and consideration upon proof of claim and returned without dishonor within 72 hours for and on the behalf of me or you. And then you have your inker, you put your thumbprint on, you sign your name. Now, there is no middle name. Your given name is your first name hyphen middle name. And then your Doe or House of Doe. If you keep signing your name first, middle, last, it's a signature. By autograph. John Henry Doe of the family of Doe, principal creditor, or if you reach the state, office of executor. All rights reserved without prejudice, UCC 1 308, waiver, wavering none ever, never waiving your rights. Again, to appear in court, you must sign a document saying, I'm waiving your rights. You cannot give an autograph of waiving your rights. You understand? Maybe on murder charges, where they take you straight from jail to, to court. But please comprehend what I'm telling you. Even if you're forced to go to jail and you're forced to go to court, sign it this way. Request an ink stamper because they already have your fingerprints and they will use them to get to your account anyway. All rights reserved without prejudice, waiving none of my rights ever in my true, lawful, and private capacity as beneficiary of the original inherent jurisdiction. Consent must be sought in all private in all matters of privacy wherever mutually of mutually of interest occurs so we have strategies for court avoid the courts whenever possible says judge dale american courts all administrative courts in admiralty jurisdiction are pseudo courts or fictions or simply corporate administrative offices designed to resemble courts and all of the judges are simply executive administrators designed to resemble judges. Understand what is going on. What happened in these wars? In the Civil War, the nations that had the right to create laws 
lost to the new American. At the end of the Civil War, all the slave masters lost. What happened to the slaves? Nobody had any authority. Blood of the king. God chooses the king. No one had any authority to make any new laws. This is why you have statutes, code, acts to council because none of us have the right or authority to be kings. The purpose of these pseudo-corporate courts is only to settle contract disputes. And since George Washington's government was military in structure, understand what it just said. The survivor of the Civil War. George Washington's government was only military in structure. If either party refuses to participate, these courts cannot become involved in the dispute is dead in the water. My use of the term dead in the water cannot be countered because these pseudo courts are unconstitutional courts of admiralty and the international law of the sea. Why? It's cargo. It's America. What was America's standard before it was overthrown? Bankruptcy. What was its standard? It's to receive all nations. The weak, the poor of all nations. It was to be a land for the meek. The pseudo judges of these pseudo courts have no powers without the consent of both the plaintiff and defendant. And in every case, the judge must determine that he has consent, personum, and subject matter jurisdiction before he can act or access the SESTEQ trust. This is what the thumbprint is for. Note, all tradable securities must be assigned a QCEP number. If your birth certificate connects to a QCEP number, then you are surety, a tradable security. If I told you over and over and over again, they trade you on the stock market, the stock market. I've explained to you that is genitalia. All tradable securities must be assigned a QCEP number before they can be referred, offered, excuse me, offered to investors. You are an investment, a government employee. Birth certificates, social security applications are converted into government securities. They are then assigned a QCEP number. They are then grouped into lots and they are marked as mutual fund investments. Upon maturity of these mutual fund investments, you turn 18, you turn 25, the profits that are grown out of this are moved into a government SESTEQ trust made out of you, your trust, your nation, Inc. And if you are still alive, certified documents are reinvested over and over and over and they multiply. And that is the pyramid scheme. That's why you can't have any other pyramid scheme except for what? SESTQ trust funds. Or you'll go to jail. 
It is the funds contained in the SESTIQ trust that the judge, the clerk, and the county prosecutor are really after your fucking thumbprint. Or, that's really what their interest is in. Again, the interest is in you, right, compounding as a in mutual fund the maturity of the fund draws in the profits once they're moved into the SESTIQ government trust and the judge and the clerk and the county prosecutor all have access to the trust this is their incentive of sending your legal fiction to jail and as long as you're gonna say I'm with that motherfucker you're gonna go to jail too and then they get what payday this trust actually pays all your debts or it's supposed to pay all your debts and this was the purpose of the Treasury Department being set up so that every Americans needs were already taken care of but the people that rule over you have set it up so that they can access your personal private trust as your executor without letting you know this is what they're doing and this is why they drive the nice cars to their second and third homes because they are living off the debts that you were supposed to be able to pay yourself but they're living off the debts you've paid because now they've selected things and to pay with your money or your net worth that is set up by this trust. Which is not only fraud, it's theft, it's treason. This trust is, it actually pays all of your debts and nobody tells you because the elite consider those assets to be their property now again it's your property it's in your name the forefathers of this system set it up so that because you were weak and meek and you couldn't survive in your own systems you were supposed to come here and by birth everything you needed was to be paid for for the next generation not to experience that Somebody stole it all from you and have been doing so year after year since this country was formed. So in 1933, it was privatized meaning the individual public member would know and this is why the the statement in 1933 was that now the country will be driven by your production because before you were driven by your production Because these trusts have been around since before 1933. These trusts, they were passed down from father to son. This trust actually pays all your debts but no one tells you because what the elite consider those assets to be their property and the Federal Reserve System is responsible for the management of those investments so it is nobody's responsibility to inform you of any of this I'm sure someone sits in that office 
Social Security, SSI, SSD, Medicare, Medicaid are all financed by the trust. The government makes you pay taxes and a portion of your wages supposedly to pay for these services, which they can borrow at any time for any reason since they cannot access the SESTIQ Trust to finance their wars or to bail out Wall Street and their patron corporations. Now, technically, most of your purchases should be through this trust. When you go and buy anything for $1, you've added to national debt. But when you pay through this trust, debt's removed. So someone seems to want the national debt to spiral out of control. At your arraignment or trial, the judge will ask you if you are the named individual, all caps, birth name, on the complaint, and your natural response will be to answer the affirmative, and that's exactly what they want you to do. Do not do it. Remove your birth certificate and respond to him by stating, I am making a special limited appearance on behalf of the defendant who is right here, and hold up the certificate. Then state the following. As I understand this process, judge and county attorney or police officer or policy officer has leveled a criminal charge with the clerk against the trust using the your name, your nation, all caps name that appears on the birth certificate. The use of the capital letters is a distinction by the U.S. printing style manual, which explains how to identify a corporation. The clerk, who is the administrator of the SESTIQ Trust, then appointed you, the judge, as the trustee for the trust and since neither of you can be the beneficiary that leaves me and therefore you are my trustee so as my trustee i instruct you to discharge this matter with prejudice and award the penalties for these crimes to be paid to me in compensation for the damages for my false arrest so Understand what happens. They have typed this up because they are going to use the birth certificate to make themselves the beneficiary. But by stating this, you can block that on the record. Make yourself the beneficiary, force them into trusteeship. So it is their responsibility to take care, take the best consideration for the trust, which means not steal from it because you push, put it on the record. Or as people would say, you busted them. Or as dragon brains would say, you caught them in the middle of the hijack. Note, he went to prison for theft. <clears throat> the law of trust dictates that an administrator, trustee, and beneficiary cannot serve two positions in the trust, so a trustee cannot be a beneficiary too. So do you understand what's going on? The clerk plays a role. The judge plays a role. Hmm? And the county attorney or the police officer plays a role. And do you see what they're doing? One, two, three. So, one acts as the trustee and they don't get shit. And then two act as joint beneficiaries.
So the trustee cannot be the beneficiary. So they take the they take the split, and then they what? They they give the kickback because on paper, if the clerk is the trustee, he can't be the beneficiary. So he's not going to sign this for the judge if the judge ain't going to give him shit too. So when you go in there and put your papers on the record and they shocked look on their face, it's because the what? The clerk, the judge, and the off the court officers are stealing. You they had their hands in your pie already. And this right here, you can do this. I instruct you to discharge the entire matter. And I want to be paid for what you tried to steal. Or you know right now you can slap down personage, treason. On the judge, the clerk, and the county attorney. Hung on Market Street by noon. Thieves. You have the right to go into their records. All the cases that this has been done. The trustee judge has no alternative but to honor your demands, but you have the right to to get, excuse me, but you have to get this right to act with confidence. You really need to know this information well, so you can't be hoodwinked or confused by either of them or any of them, because again, even in the example, they work as a group. I, you, me, we know they constantly work as a group every day doing the exact same thing to all the people in the city that don't look like them. They will or may attempt to play some mind games with you if you display any doubt. If you look confused, if you stammer, you, sp you display a lack of confidence, appearance, because this is a poker game, the pump and majesty, appearances of, the of these pseudo courts is totally for your benefit and is intended to provoke fear and intimidation. So, by doing something like this, the judge might start yelling and screaming at you. Because he knows he has control of that boat. If you just ignore him and say and stay there and sit through it, because he wants you to reply. He wants you to say, fuck you, old man. He wants you to say something like that so he can throw you out of court. No matter what he says, sit there through it. He's trying to intimidate you. If you show fear or intimidation, you going to get that pony ride. If the county attorney begins to act too cocky with you, you can take the wind out of his sail by asking him to produce his 1040 for this case. If he denies you the need to do such a thing, inform him that you will be taking care of that for him ASAP as soon as possible. All these cases need to follow up with a 1040 because of the money involved. He may move for a discharge at that point because you are a little too dangerous or you know too much. The last thing that the prosecutor wants is the IRS examining his files for the last seven years because he makes money on every conviction and he doesn't pay taxes on them as a rule. Why? Well, you just stole money from every person that went before you that year. If you record all the money you stole, you go into a higher tax bracket. Now, you're taking a city pay at what? Oh, 68000 a year. If you record, you stole $2 million through administrative court well fuck you gotta pay tax on two mil right two mil sixty eight buddy he only declares the salary he received you understand what's going on 
They don't want it on the money books. They don't want it on the recordable record of words, court record. They don't want it on the court records. Citations. The citation process can be handled much easier through the mail. When a police officer or a policy officer issues a citation, he is usually requesting you to contract with him, and he's alleging that you violated a corporate regula reg regulation in writing, which you have accepted by signing and thus requires you to respond. The police officer is instructed to explain that your signature is merely an acknowledgement that you received a copy of the citation, but in actuality, your signature is notification to the court and judge that you have accepted or consented to this offer to contract, which also grants the judge consent and personum and subject matter jurisdiction over you and the case. You can cancel the contract, however, by rescinding, rescinding your consent. The Federal Truth in Lending Act provides that any party to a contract may rescind his consent within three business days of entering into such a contract. So across the face of the citation, you should print or type in large print the following. I do not accept this offer to contract and I do not consent to these proceedings. Use blue ink for admiralty or purple for royalty. Admiralty is the court and royalty represents your sovereignty. Either way is appropriate. Sign your signature. Sign your signature underneath in blue or purple ink. And in the front of the of a notary or under your signature type without prejudice UCC-1-308. UCC this is another way to declare that you may not be held responsible for the contract pursuant to the Uniform Commercial Code. Again, when you're under oath, excuse me, when you have an oath and you are told You are told that this is a mere acknowledgement that you received a citation. But in actuality, it is a contract and you just gave your consent. That is fraud. They are selling something. And you're not being told they are selling something. And this revolves around the name, which is personage. Serve canceled citations back on the clerk of courts along with a certificate of service by a certified mail. Return receipt requested. This kills the citation, removes your consent, and removes the jurisdiction of the court. All at the same time, it's really that simple. Note, certificate, certificate of service is a letter that first identifies a citation and then it defines how and when you return the document to the court and is signed. If not denied, it becomes a truth in commerce by tactic procuration. Remember to keep a copy of everything in case the clerk attempts to trash your response, which certainly will not appear, excuse me, it will not happen when a certificate of service or if it is mailed back by the notary. The notary is actually the deputy secretary of state and is more powerful than the clerk of court. Summons and lawsuits. The summons process, whether it is define a civil or criminal act is once again an offer to contract despite what the words are used to command you to appear 
or respond. It too can be canceled by the following same procedure as a citation process above. A million dollar lawsuit is no different than a citation and both can be canceled. Hard to believe, isn't it? Retired judge and whistleblower, Judge Dale. Here's a link for Judge Dale's complete work. Establishing your living standing in court. Well, there are times when a living man and living woman finds themselves in court before a judge, either unwittingly or by force, despite not having their consent and without having caused injury to any ma living man or woman. Although an administrative court, one with no jury, is a dispute resolution service for consist consenting parties, a living man and living woman who consented to join her joinder with dead legal persons it is also a place of ancient satanic magic this is why living people are summoned as if to magically appear in court becoming dead historically a judge wearing a black robe as if the high priest of baal the temple of baal enforcing babylonian talmudic law the judge or the black robed devil requires an offering from those who appear in the temple the priest of baal makes a judgment upon one who was given up their life and in doing so the priest delivers a curse in the ancient times of death and in modern times debt and the victim is sacrifice the word bailiff derives from baal Baal, because the Baalif is the servant of the high priest of Baal. The Black's Law Dictionary in context is a book of black magic. Again, this is why I stated why did they go outside of Bouvier's to find some of these things and look at how this judge feels about the Black's Law black magic law dictionary however if you do not wish to be presumed dead suffering judgment you must establish your living rights otherwise you will simply have no rights maxim of the law one who does not exist excuse me does not establish their rights has none this has to re has to do with recording one's rights to establish you are living standing in court. One, your honor, I am a living being. I humbly ask for remedy. This point, if you have behaved with honor and respect, you may be dis, uh, uh, dismissed. But the judge is not out of options. He can leave the court and re enter, and now the court has become a higher court. Under Canon Admiralty Maritime Jurisdiction. So he just changed jurisdictions and made it a higher court. So you must establish your standing again, but in a higher court. And the way to do this is then, Your Honor, I am a living being. The flesh lives, the blood flows. Your Honor, I am humbly asking for a cure and maintenance. Now, remember on c you get scurvy cure and my ship needs maintenance the judge may totally freak out at this point if he doesn't dismiss you and decides to leave again and come back as a priest so you are in a temple now and the court is under tail mood the Taymudic law which is very rare meaning the judge how high is his degree, right? Because the judge is at the limit of his authority within the law. He is vulnerable. So you must establish your living standing appropriately and address him as follows. Your Honor, I wish to establish that I am the living being. The flesh lives, the blood flows. 
and we are sovereign. Nothing stands between myself and the divine. And that's it. The game is over. You control the court and can dismiss the judge. Now, I'm sure if you want to understand more of this, if you just take dismiss the judge or dismissing the judge and look up uh, DuckDuckGo or something like that, you can find some uh, something on that. UCC, Power of Fine. Two is Admiralty, Maritime, Power of Jail. And three is the Talmudic, the Power of Death. And these are the three different ways to address the judge changing the judge's face on you. Again, the UCC Commercial Code. The administrative courts are entering the international bankruptcy and therefore they operate in an international admiralty maritime commercial jurisdiction the law of the sea and are bound by a uniform commercial code and the ucc is a colorable version of admiralty colorable admiralty jurisdiction is known as statutory jurisdiction right statutory law Color of law, mere semblance of a legal right. It resembles a kind of, right? <clears throat> so, this is state X R E L. I'm not sure what this is. West versus Des Moines, right? Mr. West versus Des Moines, Iowa, 96. Blah, 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 Iowa. Okay. In order for the UCC to be implemented, there had to be provisions requiring it to be in harmony with the common law. This requirements may be this requirement may be found at the USC section 1-103, which when invoked al along the UCC section 1-207 represents a powerful method of protecting your natural rights from encroachment by the government. The recourse appears in the UCC at 1-103.6 which says the code is complementary to common law which remains in force except where displaced by the code the statute should be construed in harmony with common law unless there is a clear legislative intent to abrogate the common law so that's ucc 1-103.6 this is a strategy in court the code recognizes the common law if it did not recognize common law the government would have had to limit excuse me admit that the government would have to admit that the corporate state is bankrupt and is completely owned by its creditors but it is not expedient to admit this so the code was written so as not to abolish the common law entirely therefore if you have made a sufficient timely and expedient reservation of your rights at 1 dash as ucc 1 dash 207 you may then insist that the statutes be construed in harmony with common law if the charge is a traffic ticket you may demand the court produce the injured person who has filed and verified complaint if for example you were charged with the failure to buckle your seat you may ask the court who was injured as a revolt as a result to the failure to buckle up however if the judge won't listen to you and just moves ahead with the case, then you may want to read the last sentence of 103.6, which states, actually, it is better to use a rubber stamp because it demonstrates that you have previously reserved your rights. The simple fact that it takes several days or a week in order to get a stamp that shows that you had reserved your rights before signing the document. Anderson Uniform Commercial Code Lawyers, Cooperative Publishing Company. The code cannot be read to preclude a common law section. Tell the judge, Your Honor, I can sue you under common law for violating my rights under the UCC. 
I have a remedy under the UCC to reserve my rights under the common law. I have exercised the remedy, and now you must construe this statute in harmony with common law. To be in harmony with common law, one must come forth with the damaged party. If the judge insists on the proceeding with this case, just act confused and ask the question. Let me see if I understand, Your Honor. Has this court made a legal determination that sections 1-207 and 1-103 of the Uniform Commercial Code, which is the system of law you are operating, are not valid law before this court? And then the judge is in a jam. How can a court throw out one part of the code but uphold another? If he answers yes, then you say, I put the court on notice that I'm appealing to your legal determination. Of course, the higher court will uphold the code on appeal, and the judge knows this. So once again, you've boxed him in. And what is a person? In the imaginary world of legal fiction, and all commerce is legal fiction. A person is always an artificial legal person of one kind or another legally generated. A legal person is any subject matter to which the law attributes a mere legal or fictitious personality. This extension is one of the most noteworthy feats of the legal imagination. Legal persons, being the arbitrary creations of law, may be of some kind as the law pleases. Those recognized by our system, however, all fall within a single class, namely corporate or bodies corporate. The source of this is Jurisprudence, the 7th edition, Sweet and Maxwell, 1924, section 1. One three page three thirty six. Natural person from Black's Law Dictionary: a human being, a natural born versus a legal generated jurisdictional person. Artificial person, Black's Law, Section edition, uh, Second Edition: a non-human entity that is created by law and is legally different, owning its own rights and duties. Jurisdictional person, we're getting this from Black's Law section, second edition. Entity as a firm that is not a single natural person has a human being authorized by law and duties and rights, recognized as a legal authority having a distinct identity, a legal personality, also known as an artificial person. Judicial entity, judicial person, or legal person, also refer to body corporate. Natural person, Black Law, 7th edition, a natural being is distinguished from an artificial person created by law. On birth certificate, a legal person, and the name is a deceased estate trust. This is why. The definition of the term person in the United States Social Security Act of 1935 includes trust or estate. Social Security Act of 1935 definition section 1101. When used in this act, the term person means an individual, a trust, or estate, a partnership, or a corporation. Can mean any of those things. Existence of two entities, the legal person and the natural person, the currently accepted term for the artificial legal entity and for the natural living entity, is plainly acknowledged in the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act of 1990 in Section 29, the application to legal persons, except where the provisions of this Bill of Rights otherwise provide, the provisions of this Bill of Rights apply. So as far as practical, practicable, 
for the benefit of all legal persons as well as the benefit of all natural persons. Black's Law Dictionary, revised 4th edition, 1968, provides the following definitions of written styles. Capitus diminutive, <laughs> diminish, diminish, diminish. <clears throat> it is the diminishing of status through the use of capitalization in Roman law. See, we use Roman law. You see, we use trusts. We use them in Greeks. You see, we use using birth certificates. We're using Babylonian, right? Babylonian Talmudic law. That's what he said, right? All these things are of the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. Hmm? All these things are the pieces of law that are taken from the Isle of Man and brought here and used against us. They diminish your stance through Roman law, a diminishing or abridgment of personality, a loss of curtailment of a man's status or aggregate of legal attributes and qualifications. Cavitus diminutio uh, minima means a minimum loss of status through the use of capitalization. Right? John Doe. The lowest or least comprehensive degree of loss of status occurs where a man's family or relatives alone were changed. You see that? It happens when the arrogation, the pride of a person who has been his own master, Seriseris, of his own right, and not under any legal disability or upon emancipation of one who has been under the Patrius potest Potestius, parental authority. It is left the rights of liberty and citizenship unaltered. So this is Mechfeld on Roman Law 144. Now, are you understanding what's going on? Remember, 144,000 wake up and they correct what has legally been done to them. I told you that righteousness ain't what you've been taught of good and bad. Righteousness is following the law. It says, honor your mother and father. Ain't nothing in that shit say be nice to your neighbors. There are other laws that say be nice to your kin. So you get it. Capitus Domitia Media means the medium loss of status through the use of capitalization. See how the name is there? Here you deal with what? All caps? Here you deal with upper and lower. And you deal with upper and lower in the first name, all caps, last name, and media. Medium loss of status occurs when a man's rights of his citizenship, but not without losing his liberty. It occurs when a man loses his rights of citizenship, but not his liberty. It carries away also the family rights. This is already telling you the family rights are gone. Parental authority is gone. You can be living at home with your parents. And they don't care. They, on an administrative side, have marked you as what? Right? Pride of a person who has been their own master. This is one of your ancient relatives. He was of his own right, not under any legal disability, upon the emancipation of one who had been under the patrias potestis, paternal authority, left the rights and liberties, left the rights and liberties unaltered. 
and here's maxima. And this is the loss of status through the use of capitalization, right? The highest and most comprehensive loss of status. This occurs when the, a man's condition was changed from one of freedom to one of bondage. When he became a slave, it swept away all the rights of citizenship and all family rights. So understand, it is a slavery, right? So that's maximum, that's medium, and that's low, right? So what's saying here? A slave is one position, right? Citizenship is another position, and family is the third position. So Minima probably be family rights, medium is citizenship rights, and maxima is you're a slave. So I would presume all these are based on the position that you were in or your ancestor was in when America started. And they're all carried over now because most people don't know this exists. Note the types of persons evidence of the following styles. When you have upper and lower case for all your appellation, a forest, excuse me, a foreign titus, cystus. A foreign Roman trust. When you're in all caps, it's a CESTIQ V estate trust. This is when someone's writing to you. Not on your birth certificate. When someone's writing to you. And when it's capital, first name, initial, and all caps, last name. Your public transmitting utility. If you don't know what these are, look them up. Grow up. All right, so thank you for the author. If you guys have time, type in living in the private. If you want to donate to the author, the links are in the site, Educated in Law. And remember, if this site didn't exist, we wouldn't be reading this. Thank you for your participation. I want to thank all the readers that came over and helped. I want to thank Joe, Brandon, Chris, Willie. And Tavares. Thank you all. Shalom.